musical has come to Broadway's Stephen Sondheim Theater. It stars Jesse Mueller as the legendary singer-songwriter, and I'm here on opening night to celebrate with the company. feel tonight? I'm, I'm full of adrenaline and completely excited. You know, everything you do is so different. What was it like I'm working really on this show? Yeah, yeah, I mean, every, you know, it's funny when I look at your sets. I mean, yeah. some people sort of design the same way. You don't. You always start from scratch and take us on this magical ride. What was it like working on Beautiful? Well, you know, every piece I do, I try to find some hook, some way into the story that lets it take on a life of its own. And for me on this one, it's that line that Carol King has really early on where she describes 1650 Broadway and she says, it's like a factory, but they make songs. And the minute I read that, I was like, okay, how do I design that? That's the world of this play, a factory where they make songs. And so that's what I tried to design. Tell me what it's been like working on this show and making this show dance. You know, it was actually filled with a lot of surprises because I worked with singers mainly, and I had to get them to work together as an ensemble and as a team, and also to kind of reinvestigate an era that people have a memory of a collective memory of that actually isn't the true period so trying to kind of give it a sense of the true period but also heighten it romanticize it and uh, kind of glorify it for Broadway so uh, yeah it was it was a, a wonderful challenge so it was it was very exciting actually it's your Broadway debut as director. How do you feel? I, I feel I feel very excited and thrilled. It's it's uh, it's something that I've obviously always wanted to do, and it's a dream come true for me. Um, uh, but but it was it was very heartening to get to watch the show tonight and see our amazing cast and to just see the the product of so many little decisions by all of our collaborators, the designers, the the crew, the cast, and to just see what a, a, a team effort it was to get to this place and uh, it, uh, and to remember all of the decisions along the way that got us there. When you first got involved in this, it's a big show. It's a big show. Yeah. It's a big musical. We got it's a, we have a 12 person ensemble. We have uh, six principals. Um, and, and the great thing about the show, I think, is that the ensemble, although there are many of them, they all get a chance to have a step out moment. And our ensemble, every single one of them could be a principal in another show. And we have, uh, we, they each have a chance to shine and they have each have a chance to front a number because in, in, the, in Act One, a lot of the numbers are uh, the Drifters and the Shirelles and, and, and getting to see uh, these, these ensemble members uh, step out and be stars. Okay. Tell me what you love about Carol King. Well, I, you know, I, I, I love her music is so infectious and truthful, and she she has there 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 is something that is so honest inherently about everything that she does, um, and and I think that's embodied with uh, with an unbelievable amount of spot style and panache by uh, Jesse Mueller, who is just extraordinary. She's a gift to any director, and uh, she comes in every day with three or four decisions for every moment, equally truthful, and just says, hey, wh which one do you want? Um, uh, she's, a, she's such a team player, and, uh, and she always has the best of the, of the story and the show at heart in, in everything that she does. And, and she, her, her talent is just astounding. Seeing yourselves portrayed up there by those two beautiful actors, I mean, I saw you at the meet and greet, and I watched the smiles on your face, what that's like seeing your life flash in front of you that way. It's fantastic. Just them as actors, the great actors, and that I mean, they got such a magic with, for each other. It's just unbelievable. To me. They are so lovable that we fall in love with ourselves. All over again. All over again. Yeah. 
Yeah. And just talk about what this all means to me. The four of you remain friends. I mean, all through all of this, you were not, you were sort of like competitors when you first started out, but you became best friends early on and looked out for each other. You know, we were best friends even when we were competitive with yes. them. We really were, yeah. Always, and still are, and Carol is still very, very dear to us. She's, just, she's an amazing person. And let's just talk about the music itself. I mean, it lives on generation after generation. I mean, my niece is seven years old. We listen to your stuff all during Christmas while we're, you know, wrapping presents. What does that mean to you, that, that your music lives on year after year, generation after generation? What is it? Yeah. Well, to me, it's surprising. I, I never dreamed. One of the reasons that we were kind of so experimental and never feared trying anything was because I never thought any of it would live. So, it's a shock. There's also, back then, there were many more record labels, you know, many more recording artists who didn't write their own songs. So we had more of a places of an outlet for our songs. Yeah. So here we are. It's opening night. I spoke to you on the red carpet beforehand. What was tonight like for you? You know, it's very emotional. I don't know if I told you this before, but for the last 24 hours, every eight or nine minutes, I burst into tears. Because you just, you know, you can't, I mean, I grew up in West Texas. I was in the community theater. You know, we thought of New York in this, like another planet. And so to be here and to be, to have worked with such a great group, you know, with songwriters I grew up listening to and loving, and then having this fresh new talent who play the songwriters, who are so extraordinary, it's, a, you know, what can I say? It's, a, it's just a, a kind of heart-stopping thrill. Another open night on Broadway. How do you feel? I'm so thrilled. I, I, it was very hard not to cry the whole night. I'm so honored and thrilled to be here in this play. You know, it's great. This must have been quite a journey for you working on this, playing her mom. What kind of research was there out there on Carol's mom? Well, a lot, because um, I Googled her, and I spoke to Sherry about her, and I also spoke to Carol about her briefly, and I really got the sense of who she is, and Doug, uh, the writer, talked to people about who she was, and he infused a lot of his knowledge in the lines and in the situations he wrote for me, so um, I feel very close to her. I wish she was here. And let's just talk about her music, how her, her music influenced you, Carol King, growing up, and what it means to you now. Well, growing up, it was, you know, it was a Bible to me. And what I think is beautiful about her music is she is so filled with love and poetry. When you relate to her music, you feel like you are too. So she made me feel better, like a better person, a more literate person, a more loving person. Most of your scenes are with Jesse Mueller. What's it like working with her? It's everything. I've never loved being on stage with anyone more. She's immediate, organic, loving, focused. She goes the ball, she grabs the ball. She never lets you down. She is the real thing. What has it been like working on this man, on this role? You know, it's it's been a... It's been an honor. I grew up with this music and, you know, um, Jerry Goffin from the, the first time I read the script, you know, he was a, he's a really complicated uh, person and brilliant and wrote the most brilliant songs and it was just such a, such a thrill to, to be able to play the guy and dive into uh, who he was and, uh, and to be part of it all. So much of it, of course, is written in Doug McGrath's beautiful script. Was there other research you did? Um, you know, most of the research came from uh, from talking to Doug, who spent a lot of time with with all of the songwriters, and uh, he really wanted us to understand who these people were. And you know, at the same time, uh, people don't know what Jerry Goffin sounds like necessarily. They know his music, and so you know, we were encouraged not to mimic these people and to to bring ourselves to the work and. As an actor, it's, you know, I'm, I'm so excited. I mean, I, you know, I don't have the right words. I'm so excited for all this. What is it like playing Don Kirshner? Talk about that. Uh, uh, I watched Don Kirshner growing up on TV, as did many of us, because uh, I was a teenage insomniac. And you had to be, because he was on in the wee hours of the morning, and he had this great show called Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. And many of our rock and roll icons were on that show on television for the first time on that show. The Stones and Kiss and The Police and people like that. So I admired him for years for that. He was always kind of um, 
there, there were times when he was sent up because he was a little wooden on, on, on camera. So to investigate the guy behind that guy was really a lot of fun. And it turns out there's a great story to tell about him in the 60s that we really don't know about. The monkeys and Carol King and all these people that he was responsible for producing. He was called the man with the golden ear by Time magazine and it was it stuck because it was true. He knew what he was doing. And working with this company of actors. What a good group. Um, Paul Blake and uh, our producer has really assembled a fantastic crew of people. Um, we all discovered one another slowly over readings and workshops and things, and now we've been working together for five months, and we, we, it's always nice to go out of town because we become a family. You know, I know every show that people work on are special, and you've done a lot of those shows, but what's made this so special? Is it the creative team? Is it the cast? It is a charmed group of people from the top down. It's so many people's sort of first times being in charge. Our director, Mark Bruni, first time in charge. Paul Blake has been directing, or excuse me, has been producing forever, but it's his first time with, with our other producer, Mike Bosner. It's their first time on Broadway taking the bull by the horns. Douglas McGrath, first time writer. I mean, all these people. Jesse, it's her first lead of a show. This is my first or, or, um, originating of a role. Uh, There's so many firsts, and, and all these people who are making their Broadway debuts in the cast, and so we're all sort of doing this together in this almost naive kind of is this always the way it works sort of a way uh, and it's it's a very special thing and that, not to mention we get to perform this music night after night that people connect with on such a deep level that it's it's almost hard to understand until people like Bernadette Peters come backstage and talk to you about how in, how affected they are and you can see it in their eyes I mean they're almost in tears that Carol just Carol just cuts to the heart her music cuts to the heart and and for some of us who are a little younger who grew up listening to it sure but weren't there when it came out and it's such an honor to to be able to perform these songs and give these people something a little taste of 1971 of 1968 or whatever whatever song whatever moment meant so much to them that's what makes this show so special out of this whole incredible catalog of songs of Carol King's, what's your favorite? Is there a favorite? Yeah, uh, Beautiful is my favorite uh, because I didn't know it before and because it's the anthem for our show and really should be your anthem for life. You've got to get up every morning with a smile on your face, show the world the love in your heart because you're beautiful as you feel. If we all really truly knew and believed that, the world would be a happier place. Okay, so when you were taking your bow tonight on Broadway in front of that star-studded audience, what went through your mind? Uh, I started to cry because, uh, I don't know, this may be too long a story, but I started to cry because uh, I, had a, I, I had a brush with death during our rehearsals. I had stomach pains that landed me in the ER day four, um, and they ended up having to take out eight inches of my colon and told me it was going to be eight weeks to recover, and I thought, oh, I've lost this show, this amazing part, I've lost it. And then I thought, no, I'm going to fight for this part. And six days after my surgery, with a belly full of staples, I was back in rehearsal, and this group of people allowed me to heal on the job. And so what was going through my mind in bows and why I started started to weep was I can't believe I actually got here because there were so many obstacles to getting here and so to be there was like uh, you know just so much more of a, of a big deal and such a joy and something I was so grateful for that I might not have been quite so grateful for if I hadn't had that crazy crazy sort of tragic wow but you know her songs are so spiritual and inspirational that must have helped also yeah uh, there's something about Carol King's vibe that sort of pervades the show, and I, I think is one of the reasons why everyone involved is so lovely. I think it attracts good people who want to do good work, and um, so uh, it's it's this, the Sondheim Theater is such a happy place to be. I've never experienced like how much we all look forward to going to work every day, um, and uh, and I think that that has a lot to do with Carol King's essence. So congratulations. It's opening night now. How do you feel? It's opening night. We're open. I feel fantastic. <laughs> we were so ready to be open. You know what I mean? Uh, and this, it's just the energy tonight was incredible. Just incredible. You know, we spoke at the meet and greet. What has this whole journey been like creating this wonderful woman? Uh, I get a little verklempt. Um, I, it sounds so cheesy, but I, I, um, I feel like I, Jesse, have actually learned a lot from her and just... Uh, 
And now, and now I just I see her as such a model, as someone to follow, as just sort of a, a map of how to possibly navigate this sort of business and uh, with grace and poise and and she just she continues to be someone that I look up to now. So you know, you capture the essence, but you also become her. Was she easy to find? Parts of her, I think, I, I just feel like there are certain parts that I do relate to um, about her. And and then there were other parts that, that, that were harder to find. I mean, some, you know, some technical things. It's like, I've never been married. I've never had children. So those kinds of things as an actor that you have to do your work to try to figure out what that would mean to you or how. But, um, but I think there, there's some things essentially about her that I that are easy for me to slip into and that's one of the reasons I love doing the role and it's also fun every night to slip into someone that, that is that um, is that positive has that kind of outlook on life it, it's a good it's a good thing as a human being to try to take on every once in a while you know what I mean and working with this company oh my gosh this cast this cast is incredible every single person on that stage you can check in with them at any moment and they're all we're all there for each other and we've all been through this process and we made this thing together and Douglas McGrath our book writer was so collaborative and you know gave us such beautiful stuff and listened to us if we had a good idea and you know what I mean like graciously told us if it wasn't happening you know what I mean um, and, and Mark Bruni as you know led this company with such such love you know it's really incredible and and everybody Jason Howland from our designers everybody our crew I, I couldn't I couldn't wish for a better group to come to work with every day I really couldn't and the audience's reaction audiences are loving this show from the second it starts what is that like for you well you know what the, the audience reaction to this has been so interesting because you know what I mean uh, they come in loving this music a lot of people know this music and love this music and and that's it's a very freeing thing for us I think because we know that what we have to do is honor the music and honor the people and get out of our own way and and, and uh, you know, audiences are ready to love it. So that that's what that's what we have to do. And and it's it's a joy to do it every night. It's a joy to sing this music. I don't think I'd ever get tired of it. You make me